Welcome to Bridging the Gap. And we are here with a unique person who has found that our part of the world is so nice, she's going to move here. This is Miss Sally Platts. Sally, what made you decide to move to this area? Well, actually, many, many years ago, my yes. family would come and we would go to the campground at the state park and, and camp out. It was so nice, so fun. And then we would come and roam around in the town. And then I started coming to Chautauqua. And that was <laughs> really the best thing. And then I would started bringing my girlfriends. And for years, we've done that. So finally, I had the opportunity to actually move here full time. Oh, this is awesome. I love well, I, it. I knew you would. This is just a beautiful place to be. Mm -hmm. It's in between, I think, Personally, I think it's in between Chicago and Nashville. It's got that kind of feel mm -hmm. to it. So. Mm -hmm. You can still get to all the major cities mm -hmm. if you need to, or to an airport, but have the benefits of being in the country and the beautiful, beautiful buildings. Oh, yeah. Now, what is the unique business that you have brought to the community? Well, I have a business called Etiquette Enrichment. And I teach etiquette classes, or I will do consultations for businesses or individuals. And um, I, I love it. I've had so much fun with it. I've done it for four years now. I've been working on uh, etiquette classes for four years. I started when I was a school teacher, and I started with my church youth group. And then I started branching out, and I actually went to get some formal training. And so then I decided, OK, I could do this as a business. And I've had so much fun with it. I teach business and social etiquette. And there is a difference. Yes. There's, yes. there's a big difference there. Yes. But I think what helps you in your field, what you're doing is your grandmother. Yes. Your grandmother was like mine. You, mm -hmm. If you set the table for a snack, yes. you set the yes. table. There yes. was nothing in between there. You yes. Know? And she mm -hmm. always, she really taught us by example. It wasn't so much that she was so strict or, you know, it was not the black and white rules, but it was just a matter of, she was a good model for us. She drank her coffee out of her little china cup and saucer every morning. We didn't put a jar of jelly on the table. We would put the jelly in a little dish with a pretty little spoon. Right. And so it was just a part of our lives. She taught us how to set the table. She taught us about having good manners, saying yes, ma'am, thank you, no, ma'am, you know, yes, please, all of, all of those things, you're welcome. Just showing respect for each other. And she really modeled that for us. And that carries over when you go into like a, a business interview and some of the etiquette things that people don't think about are what? What are some of those things that they really need to focus on for an interview? Well, the very first thing that I teach any age, I don't care if they're three year old or, you know, a hundred years old, I teach about your eye contact and I teach about your smile and I also teach how to have a good handshake, a good firm handshake. I think at any point in your life, those three things will make a difference. And really the, the reason I, I chose to um, continue my teaching of etiquette is because I believe it helps you build relationships with other people. And so you have to have eye contact and a smile and a good handshake to have a good relationship. You have three seconds to make your first impression with someone else. It might be a wrong impression, but you have those three seconds, you can give them a firm handshake. Uh, I make my grandsons do that and always have, so that, that's really good. Aww. But now, the one thing that I think a lot of people forget to focus on in their etiquette is their Facebook page. Now, mm -hmm. They think, yes, it is their friends are looking at it, but so are your friends' friends and your friends' employers. And if you're being hired, what are some of the things that they really need to watch out on Facebook? Yes, social media is a definite part of our lives. We can't do without it. No. We all are part of it. So it's going to be very important that you remember to protect your privacy, get in those settings, and figure out who you want to see your, your Facebook page or your Instagram or your LinkedIn or whatever. And then also to um, po po oops, possibly have a professional account and a personal account. And then, last of all, be careful what you post. If you are engaging in some kind of a political discussion or something that is maybe controversial, your future employers, your future uh, maybe scholarship committee people, the people that are making a decision about you, they are going to look at your social media to see what kind of person you are. And what are you involved in? What are some of your opinions? 
and maybe you you don't think that people will look, but they do. It is important. They will pay attention to that. I have actually known someone who really lost a big time job because of their social media. And they told them that later. I know I've had some friends that have actually killed their Facebook page because of some of the things that mm -hmm. were on it when they realized yes. how much people really look at that Facebook mm -hmm. page. And so they, they cleaned up their Facebook page and then they started a new one mm -hmm. with a totally different agenda yes. to where that they maintained it in a different way. I would suggest that. And if you are going to engage in some kind of an argument <laughs> on the Facebook page, be careful. Be careful what you say. Be careful about the words that you use yeah. and the language. And it's just to be cautious. That's a great, that's, that's really great for a lot of people nowadays, young or old, because they don't think about it. Yes. Another thing is the things that you forward. Sometimes you think you've read it, but maybe you misunderstood it, or maybe other people connect meaning with it in a different way. I had a situation where I thought I was liking something that my friend had posted, and she took great offense to what I liked that I thought was in support of her. I had to apologize. It was, it was hard. So after that, I said, okay, I'm going to be very, very cautious about what I like on yes. my Facebook or what I connect with, like on Instagram or right. any of those other social media sites. What you comment on or whether you share. The comments, yes, and or sharing, yes. yes, all of that. And, and, and I find that I really suggest, I take care of a lot of businesses with their Facebook pages and I always suggest to them that if you're commenting on sports or school things, mm -hmm. just say congratulations. Mm -hmm. Don't go into detail because mm -hmm. they don't know who's on the other side of that page talking. Yes. So it can be an uncomfortable congratulations with a lot of mm -hmm. wording that doesn't need to be there, or it can just be congratulations and it doesn't matter who's behind mm -hmm. that page talking. Simple is better. Yes. yes. And safer. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Much safer. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well now, with our kids, when I, my kids are grown, they're 30, 35 or 38 and 34. So. With them, I don't think they're going to end up going to the White House to be an intern or something like that because their lives have already been pretty much set. Mm -hmm. But we made sure they knew how to do things as far as etiquette went. And I think you have a good advice for people with small children. Mm -hmm. Why should they be taught etiquette at a small age? Well, if you start with your children now and they practice it at home, then it just becomes natural and they don't have to stop and think about it. They're not correcting their children when they're in a restaurant or out in a public setting or at a celebration meal or a wedding, something like that, where you're expecting your children to have good manners. So if they've already been doing it at home, then they have, they have a chance to do it just without reminders. But the other piece to this is that you never know what is in your future. You don't know. You may get invited to go to the White House someday for a meal. You don't know. And so if it ever does happen, you have a little bit more of a comfort level right. to know how to handle yourself. And the other thing is that for children to grow up already knowing some basic manners, some social expectations, then when they get ready to go for a job or for a, uh, to college or to some kind of other right. training, a lot of those interviews are held over meals now. So you're already giving them a heads up and a, you know, a benefit for their knowledge of how to handle themselves in a social situation, how to make dinner conversation. And if they're worrying about which fork to pick up or what to do with their napkin or, oh no, I've got to blow my nose, whatever, then they're not as ready to have an engagement with that person they're with. They're not having um, eye to eye contact. They're fidgeting, they're worrying. You know, and I think that can be a detriment. Right. There's a saying that says there's, that etiquette is the difference between good and great. People do notice if you're respectful, if you're courteous, if you show consideration for the people you're with, they notice that. And that can make a difference, especially if someone's thinking about hiring you for a job or uh, offering you a scholarship or whatever. Well, if you're being an intern, mm -hmm. and I think that's really big when you're an intern is because you're socializing with those people and when you're finished being an intern, do they want to hire you now? Yes. yes. Or do You they? may have the same qualifications as the next person, but because you've been kind and considerate and shown good manners or shown respect for the person interviewing you or even the office staff, I've heard stories about the way people interview over a meal 
there are certain things that they expect and they look for to show if you're a team player, if you're going to be considerate of the other people in the, in the business. And they take that into account by the way you handle yourself. And that's usually accurate. It's pretty it, accurate, it, yes. <laughs> it, there, it is a good reflection right. of really how you feel and what you believe or what you've learned, how you've been trained. Oh my goodness. You're in this area and you're doing seminars and you're working with school children and, and adults. And If a school wanted you to come in and do a, a lesson for them, what would they do to get in touch with you in order to be able to have you come into the schools? Well, first of all, you can always just get on my website. It's etiquetteenrichment.com. It's real easy. Everything I have is etiquette enrichment. Or they can call at 502-210-1193 for etiquette enrichment. You can email me. You can text me. I'm sallyplast at gmail.com. It's easy. Um, I love, love, love to teach children, but I love teaching all age groups. Now, what, what is the difference between teaching school children, or like grade school children, and then teaching adults? Is there a big difference in that, or are they pretty much similar? A lot of things are very similar, but the way that children will engage with other people, or even adults, is different, of course, than an adult to an adult. And I teach the children things to um, say. I teach them to say, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, yes, sir, no, sir. I, I'm a southern girl, and to me, that's showing respect. So for adults, it's a little bit differently. Um, it's a little bit different if you're involved with business etiquette, because in business etiquette, it's not gender-based at all. You don't show any difference for males or females. Well, now that means you will, you'll tell me earlier that you will do a one-on-one -on -one session if they mm -hmm. need it. You'll do a business session if they need it, and yeah. you'll do school children. Yes. Is there any other type of groups All that you do? All kinds of groups. I do a whole lot with 4-H <laughs> and Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, church youth groups, um, the Boys and Girls Club. I've been there. I've been to a lot of those different kinds of groups, really any group that is interested. And the other thing is I customize what I say. If you ask me for to come that. in, yes, for that specific group or that specific individual or business, if, you, if they invite me to come in, I've had businesses call me and say, we need grooming. We literally need the focus to be on grooming. So I said, okay. And so that's how I plan my presentation. In the same way with the children. Some, a lot of times the most uh, popular topic is dining. That's kind of what you think of naturally. But it's not just about dining. It's etiquette. It's, I mean, it's grooming. It's uh, thank you notes, RSVP, buffets, receptions, other right. kinds of venues that you would you know, have certain expectations of. Uh, I go through all of that, how to have dinner conversation, how to be a good friend. With the children, I go through things like bullying and uh, being a good friend, having good friendship, standing by what you say. I go through some character development with the, with the students. And I also even do some life coaching. And I've had a lot of fun with that. This has led me into that area. You're just, you have a whole ball of wax there, just a whole <laughs> bunch of little tools in a toolbox. That's really cool. I think, I think anybody would actually benefit from this, even if you have already been doing it, you know, yes. it, because you need refresher courses mm -hmm. sometimes, or you don't think about, um, you think you dress really nice, mm -hmm. and then you go to an interview, and sometimes the interviewer person doesn't think you're dressed mm -hmm. appropriately for that job. Yeah. Yes. And I think you have yes. to... And you need to know certain dress codes also for yes. certain events. Yes. If you have a written invitation, a lot of times on the invitation it will tell you what they expect for the attire. And so you, it's nice to know that. Yeah, you need to read the whole invitation. You need to read the whole <laughs> invitation, yes. That's a good idea. <laughs> you have something coming up soon. Yes. You have an event that yes. everybody gets to come to. What is that? Oh, I'm so excited. This is something fun I'm doing with the, the students, the children. From kindergarten all the way through high school, I started a, a contemporary cotillion camp. And cotillion just means manners and dancing. And so I'm calling it cot contemporary because the old uh, stereotypical way to think about a cotillion is the white gloves and the formal dances yes. and the debutante balls. I, I really feel like in our today's society, unless maybe you're going into politics or in the military, that those other formal um, 
factors aren't quite as applicable. So what I'm doing is taking modern dance songs, and I've got some of the local teenage girls that are helping me pick out the music so that it will be fun, and then we learn the basic ballroom dance steps, and we also learn some line dancing. But at the same time, we're learning manners. So I'm going to do it for one week. We'll meet each morning. The younger uh, elementary students will be separate. The middle school and high school students will be together. And uh, we'll have fun. Oh, and on the last day, we're going to have a catered brunch. And so that way, then we will practice the skills that we've learned through the week. We'll learn about all the things that I've mentioned before, the thank you notes, the grooming, all that. And uh, it's been so much fun. It's for boys and girls. A lot of boys think that they don't need it, and maybe they're mad oh. at their parents for trying to make them come to something like that, but I guarantee they will love it. And it's a good way to meet girls, too. <laughs> for the girls, it's a good way to meet the boys. <laughs> That's a good thing to know. Plus, if you meet them here at this cotillion, yes. you know that they're trying to better themselves. Oh, That's, yes. That's and what better. better thing can you do to offer to your children to help them for their future? Yeah, because like I said, you never know when your child might be an intern at the White House. Yes. I have friends that had their children grow up and be interns, and they never imagined they'd be interns at the White House. And wow. they had to get an etiquette class for them the summer before they go to the White House. Wow. So now this child's trying to learn all this in mm -hmm. one summer. Mm, wow. So well, this would be a good start. I, I think so. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> so. Well, is there anything we need to tell people aside from what we've already, I think we've covered everything, but is there something, a mm. little tidbit that you might want them to know that we didn't well, cover? The only thing I'm thinking about is sometimes you're shy or maybe afraid of coming to a class or maybe you just really don't want to. Um, take this kind of training around other people. I do individual consultations. I will meet you at a restaurant or a coffee shop or I have a, a location here in Madison in the Fountain Building where I can meet you. And you know, for some people that's a more comfortable way to learn and also maybe more specific to what you actually need to use your etiquette for. And then you can set up a table for them and oh, we can yes. go through everything. Oh, yes. And yes. We, so. Even if we're not practicing with a whole meal, we'll practice with desserts. And so that's always motivating. <laughs> I think this is wonderful and I think you, uh, you'll love Sally. She's a very sweet lady. So I'm so excited you, to be here in town. I love oh. Madison and it's, it's just a really joy to be able to think that I can give back to the community somehow. That's what my wish is for. It's very, it's It'll enrich their lives if they take 10 minutes or if they take a whole course. Mm -hmm. I think it's, it's, it's wonderful for the kids. It's wonderful adults also. Mm -hmm. so. A lot of adults have even asked me about having a cotillion. They would like to know how to do a little bit of dancing just so you can have fun when you go to a wedding or a, a charity event or something like that. Well, there's a proper way for, a, for the man to put his hand on your yes, back, and there's a proper yes. way for you to put your hand, yes. and we don't think about that nowadays. No, and, we don't. But if you, if you do it properly, then the it's other so person... It's fun. Well, the other person also thinks, wow, they, they care enough mm -hmm. to do it right. Yeah. So... Yeah. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. I think you would enjoy it. <laughs> well, if you want to take an etiquette class, you need to check out Miss Sally and give her a call, and I'm sure she'll accommodate you somehow. So as always, we thank you for watching.